thanks for coming round. We'll make you laugh before you go. Welcome to the Merman. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Did mine. Now, you want to blow yours? Do it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Natural. <laughs> I've never heard you make that noise before. <laughs> you sound, sound like an injured whale. <laughs> well, that's what conchals are. I get uh, injured whales. That's all it is. Sound of the sea. Uh, it's good to see you, man. I miss you. We, I, I don't know if people realize, but we banked a bunch of episodes cause you were going, uh, on the road overseas for over a month. So a lot of the episodes people I, were I, listening to yeah. were recorded a little peek. Behind all of the them, curtain. all of them, all of them. Yeah, I, I, I left April 16th. We didn't yep. record any since April, since before April 16th. Um, and, we're recording one because we didn't. We had the we had the skip one that we were going to record, so we're yep, recording. We ran out, we ran out of road. episodes, and you're still gone. We ran out of episodes, and you're still gone. So we had to do one like this, and then the next episode, you'll be back, and we'll spend the. I think what we'll do next episode because I miss you is we'll just both sit on the same like when I take my wife out and we haven't been on a date in a long time. I sit on the same side of the table with her in the booth just because I, I want to be next to her and really enjoy the time. So maybe I never at least got we that. set the studio I never up got, like that. I never got why you would do that. Then what you just have to like look at each other sideways the whole time. Like, Oh, this is great. I love you so much. My neck hurts. Stupid. Yeah. You, yeah, you, 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 uh, enjoy each other's physical touch being next to each other. I mean, I don't want to stare at her. It's really nice spending quality time with you. Yeah. But don't you touch each other in other places besides restaurants? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Yes and no. I mean, we don't have time to just sit like that's if we're going out and having dinner, it's finally time where it's just me and her and we're uh, connecting. We're spending time together. We're, we're relaxed. We're not like running around the house and doing laundry and f fixing fences. <laughs> Things you do at home. Yeah, fixing fences. Um, so where are you at right now? I'm in Lisbon, Portugal. Nice. And how have the shows been? Um, all good. I, all the shows have been good. I think there was one show we didn't like, but I don't remember where it was. But um, it makes you feel really bad that you can't speak any other. I mean, these people, you know, because in so many different countries and they're understanding jokes and they're just like, yeah, I got around learning a language someday. So we're going to see comedy. <laughs> like, but they do they uh, are there like uh, references or things that that get lost in translation? Well, look, your best bet, I would say, is to do a lot of sexual humor, you know? The universal I language. Do, I don't do that. I don't do a lot of that. But, um, but Amos and his set is doing more of that. And I can see, like, you know. But uh, you know what? People are still responding to everything. It depends. But um, if they don't understand, you can always tell because they'll be like, You'll do the joke and they'll laugh a little, but then when they hear that you're done, they're like, "Yeah, oh, you guys didn't get that one." All right, they're like, "Thank you, <clears throat> doing this." <laughs> um, but yeah, we just got to Portugal today, and we ate at this restaurant that I've seen on TV before. Like, I think it was on Anthony Bourdain's show. It was on Someone Feed Phil. It was like this seafood restaurant, and it was like just like shrimp and lobster and shrimp. Barnacles, ate some barnacles just now. Nice. Thanks. That sounds like it would hurt. No, they're like they, they look. I'll put a send a picture to you, Lucy. But it looks like a little. It looks like the thing from Stranger Things, that little creature. And you like yeah. break it open on the side. It's like soft, and you just eat it it's like a little stick. It tastes pretty mm. good. Um, and then this place is like famous place. You eat all this seafood, and for dessert. You eat a steak sandwich. That's, that's oh, that's, that's my that's my kind of place. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like that was made for Dave. Yeah, I'll uh, have the steak sandwich and ice cream, please. <laughs> yeah, um, and when we were in there, there was like these Argentinian guys behind us, and they were just like, 
Ole, ole. Maradona, Messi, much better than Ronaldo. They're having like this whole thing, you know. And um, then there was these this, this other table, and these people from Georgia, you know, the, the Russian country, like the Russian, the whatever. And it's not Russian. Yeah, not know. the state. Not the state yeah. that Herschel yeah. Walker was running for office, but yeah. the country of Georgia. And it was just like, there's so many people in there. They brought like this lobster out. It's like, you want to eat this? People are taking pictures of that. People are, it was like this crazy scene. And, and then this guy proposed to this woman that was in that group. But they were super drunk. By the way, it's Thursday at 3 p.m. These people were wasted, like in this, like, in this restaurant and loud. And it was just part of the charm of it, you know? And, uh, then the drunks were part of the charm. <laughs> this guy comes up to Jim. He goes, you are Jim Jeffries, right? I love you. I'm a good, good comedian. And he goes, this guy's about to propose to this girl. And he's just drunk sitting there. And you're like, this is not going to be good. And then the girl comes back upstairs. And, and he presents her a ring that I do not think was an engagement ring. I think this was like a spur of the moment like kind of thing. But her, her girlfriends are there, too. And they seem to be on board with it. And he didn't even do it good. He just grabbed her. She walked in the door. And he goes, get down on knees. like, marry me. And you can tell on her face. I was like, I don't know if that was. That's the right move there, buddy. But, <laughs> it was just like a napkin ring he grabbed real quick. <laughs> I just think it was a ring from one of those women that was like, yeah, just use this. Because I saw one of the other women that was friends come up and give him a ring. And I think they were like, just use this for now and whatever. Like, it was just, you know, I was like, that can't be a good start to a marriage. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, there's all, so these all good love stories. Like, They're going, hey, 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 hey. Like all these random dudes and we're all just sitting there in the corner. And like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not the most romantic guy, but it doesn't seem very romantic. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great, man. I'm glad you're having uh, the time of your life while Luis and I are here holding the podcast down and, uh, you know, I'm pushing our dreams dying. forward. You know, my body is shutting down at any moment because I've been gone too long. Um, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, living out of a suitcase is not easy for a week. I've already been four weeks almost now, and I still have, like, 10 more days. It's just, but... You know what really sucks is you go in and out of so many hotels is I've had to learn how to work about 20 different showers. Like every time <laughs> you get into one, you're like, all right, this is how you turn it on. And then you get this one. Like, yeah. Hmm. All right. There's three knobs, but this one has the temperature reading and it's in Celsius. Great. Perfect. Then you got to like do that. And then you do give me this other one. And then you're like, what the fuck's going on? Then you figure that shower and you're like, back up. We're going to the next country. And then you're like, all right, sure. Then that, that shower, that, you go, shoot, pull it. And you go left, right. That America has almost everywhere. Number one. <laughs> I uh, I just did shows in um, Louisville, Indianapolis, and St. Louis. And the hotel that I stayed in in St. Louis was like this old, it was like the old, like kind of historic downtown hotel, you know? Yeah. And and you could tell, like, it was nice. It was definitely very nice. But you could tell it was old, and they were masking a lot of smells with, like, just way too many chemicals, you know, that kind of thing. But with that said... The shower had been converted to a digital shower, which it didn't feel like it fit with the the old style of the hotel. But literally, you hit a power you hit, you hit a power button. It was like a thermostat in the shower. You hit a power button, and the water came on, and then you would just hit like up or down for the temperature. And yeah. I was like, "All right, felt, um, felt weird." Yeah. Well, anyways, I'm sure people well, are really <laughs> for me. I'm traversing across Europe, then I have to figure out how to use shower. Very relatable. Yeah. Well, well, while you've been eating barnacles, I had a a little bit of an injury the other day uh, involving food. Um, I had my show the other night that I've been doing monthly in El Segundo, you know, and uh, we had a blast. Uh, Place has been packed. And I'm selling tri-tip and um, pork ribs out the back of the room there. And I had some tri-tip. I made a ton because last month I ran out and people were mad. They wanted to fucking... Uh, they, they, they wanted to, to, to protest. It was crazy. So, um, I made a lot this time, right? So I had some tri-tip left over. So after the show, a couple people go back to my house to sit around the fire pit and hang out. I pulled out some of the leftover tri-tip and I sliced it up to little bite-sized snack pieces. And I brought out a skewer so people could hang the tri-tip over the fire to heat it up and then eat it, right? Thought this was going to be a real cool, chic thing to do. Like, who who else has meat that are warmed up in the fire? You know, I thought it would be I thought it was going to be a great idea. So I'm I'm heating up a piece, and I guess it like I didn't realize it was touching the lava rocks, and it few one of the lava rocks fused to the piece of meat, 
And then I didn't realize uh, it, and I picked no, it up, no. and I put the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> and and I couldn't figure – I thought it was like – I thought that just like part of the uh, tri-tip was like like got grizzly. Like I just thought it got like too burnt. Uh, and, and so I tried to bite into it even harder. Uh, and, and I was like – and then my tongue touched it, and it seared the tip of my tongue and my lip, and I spit it out. And I'm like, I just put – a fucking thousand degree lava rock in my mouth. And uh, and I'm lucky I didn't hurt myself more, but I was like, I might not be able to do shows and do podcasts this week, but I'm all right. I'm tough. And I'm, I'm, I'm tough. What? You're okay. Like, how are you talking? I don't know. I burned night. it all right there. Uh, two nights ago. The fuck? Yeah. And it actually hurts more today than it did yesterday for some reason, but. Yeah, that's how that's how that works. Kind of thing, but. Maybe I just have a naturally tough mouth. Like maybe it's I'm like those guys who are the fire walkers who walk across the the coal of uh, the 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 coal the bed of coals or whatever you know, and their feet like hold up. Maybe I'm just maybe mm-hmm. my mouth's like that. Maybe I've ate such crap my whole life that my mouth can now hold up to putting a live hot lava rock in my mouth. Should I try it with charcoal? Should I see if that works? I mean, look, you haven't gotten far in America's Got Talent yet. So you might as well try that. You know, you just go on there. It's going be a, a joke, and then you eat a hot piece yeah. of Yeah. I'll just have some sort of catchphrase like, these jokes are hot. Yeah, you need a better catchphrase than that, but somewhere in that yeah. realm. Yeah. Mm. yeah I'm, I'm, Something like roasted. Yeah, roasted's good. Yeah, yeah. I like roasted. Roast, yeah, you just, <laughs> you'll be a roast comedian. You go yeah. on there, and then you, Simon Cowell, you have a joke, and you roast it, and then you squish it around, and you spit it out, and to show everybody, you spit it on the something that so it'll catch on fire, like a vapor. Oh, that's good, so they know it's still hot. Yeah, yeah, you got to show them it's hot, otherwise it's just going to be like a fake coal. I might then, need to shave the mustache. I feel like it's a fire hazard. And then you drink some water, milk, and you're like, okay, next one. What's up, yeah. Howie Mandel? <laughs> This is not affecting me at all. Next dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then by the time you get the the fourth judge, I don't remember his name. Heidi Klum's on there. So then you get the her. I don't know. Yeah, your tongue's so swollen you can't even do it. Um, I don't know how the end. So we got we got to workshop this on the podcast. Join the conversation, everybody. Um, mm-hmm. Second quarter. Hey, uh, we got some flack for Cinco de Mayo. I've heard. Apparently. Yeah, it was inevitable. Someone was going to say something, right? Louise, I can see you twitching around in the background there because of this angle. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, nobody but, nobody said anything to me personally or wrote anything on my social media. Like, wait, some people it, even said, so. someone even wrote like, oh, this was all in good fun. Yeah, so, where they bite. I mean. Yeah, well, first of all, is this a shot we're using for the podcast, Louise? Are you going to see like. This, no, uh, no. Yard no, it's, it's this shot. Yeah, you're uh, not going to see me pop this shot and this shot. I like this it. is just me. This is just me looking at you. Uh, um, so it feels like you're here. Louise, did we get some bad comments? Uh, yeah, there were two actually. One is for sure a listener. The other one, uh, I don't know. Could have just been passing along the YouTubes. Could have just been someone about. who was searching for something to be upset about. Yeah. Um, but all right. So do do you want me to read the comment? Because it, it's kind of lengthy. It's kind of yeah, go for it. All right, so it comes from dyslexic Anna Boko. So it mm. says, "Hey guys, I, I mean, it, they better be dyslexic because if they if that's their name and they're not dyslexic, that's more offensive than anything we've ever done. Maybe that's why they're offended too. They were looking at it all wrong. Okay. They, yeah, <laughs> they, they just got it backwards. That's all. Yeah. It was actually me dressing a sombrero, and you guys were totally yeah. fine. Yeah, of course." <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the comment says, hey, guys, Luis is too nice, so I will set you straight. Called you a pussy, Luis. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, That's so, offensive. So I will set you straight. Yeah, don't do this. Cinco de Mayo was hijacked by the USA to become another consumer holiday. There is actually plenty of info about this out there. Educate yourselves on the topic and stop asking Luis to do it for you. I know it's content for the show, but from where I am sitting, two white guys are performing cultural appropriation for the purposes of content. Thanks for not wearing brown face. What you guys are doing is as annoying as white people asking black people to explain racism to them. If you have to ask, it's probably not okay. 
Anyhow, everyone makes mistakes, but I just wanted to throw this out there for you guys to read. No, I am not Mexican. Mm. Wow. <laughs> I'm yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Diamond, thank That's you fine. for your opinion. Thank you for being calm and, and politely stating your opinion. That makes me respect it a little bit, uh, but I think you're wrong. That's all you have to say, then. Do you think you're? You think? <laughs> I just, I mean, no, I, 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 un, I understand. Like that, that was kind of the bit. Is that, yeah, Americans have totally taken over that holiday and have totally turned it into, you know, appropriation. But that's kind of what I was making fun of. I, I'm giving you the greatest example of what a big dumb white American does on Cinco de Mayo, and yeah. it's not like it's not like we were, it's not like we were in Mexico dressed like that trying to literally like represent ourselves as the the wonderful mexican people or anything i mean i don't i don't know how to i'm trying to think of an analogy here but they don't even need to say that first of all all of that stuff all of that stuff you saw was louisa let's just start with that right? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> it's that was my own personal viva mexico sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's got a stack of those hats we could have worn five hats each like this <laughs> right behind where i'm sitting I don't own one of those blankets. Uh, I don't own the Moroccas, which aren't even from Mexico. That was the joke. And then, yeah. yeah. So I, but but uh, I was wearing brown face. I'm sorry if it didn't come through. That's Louise's fault again. Because it, <laughs> yeah. he didn't do the tone right there. So I guess that was Something wasn't with the light in. Yeah. I, I straight up brown face it. But if it didn't come through, then we'll just have to try harder next year. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And you should have seen my dick. Had a little hat on it. It was also brown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's so hard to figure out. Like, I don't. I don't want to ever make anyone feel bad. That's not like you know. Like, we. we I don't think anyone does anything specifically to uh, beat someone else down or make them feel bad. Like, in that way, I would, it's just it's just fun. It just it's funny to purposely be naive and the the back and forth of Luis being like, "Hey guys, yeah, this is not." You know, I don't know. Did that not come through? It, I don't think we should be explaining the joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe because look, uh, this person does make like valid points. If this was done in like a very ignorant, malicious, and intentional way, but yeah. we were like very intentionally kind of like poking fun at Americans, like going way overboard, you know? Because even Forrest, I don't know if we're pulling the curtain back too much, but before he was like, "Yeah, I think it'd be funny if I realize while we're recording that this is fucked up," so I just take off. The, the outfit, oh, and you I, did that. I just said that to make you feel better, Louise. I did. Oh, uh, okay, got it, got it. I mean, I was saying that <laughs> that Coronas were authentic Mexican beer. Does he think that I actually think that? Like, <laughs> yeah. well, they are. I mean, and look, <laughs> yes, Cinco de Mayo. It, it, you know, in this in this time in in history, I, I understand that people should realize like, hey, man, probably the Mexican culture does not think that's cool that it's gotten to the point where that's how Americans behave. Right. But I'm assuming a lot of that came from Mexican restaurants themselves. Like, I'm sure that was like, hey, we can make a shit ton of money once a year by having a, a Cinco de Mayo party and oh, we celebrate I, Mexican culture. And then yeah. I guess what happened was at some point. Uh, there was a shift where it was like, hey, man, Cinco de Mayo is not about, like, partying. It's about, like, this this uh, this battle where Mexico had this big war and, and you guys are turning it into just a reason to get drunk. Oh, dude, I have, I have family friends that own restaurants here in Inglewood locally. And they were all like, hey, Cinco de Mayo celebration, come through. We got, like, $3 margaritas, whatever yeah. it was. It's like, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, like, I, so I blame Mexicans. Do I, <laughs> I mean, sometimes commercializing something isn't the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> I I think white people are absolved of this. this, this I don't think we have any problem. Um, by the way, you should see what we have planned for our Kwanzaa episode. It's going to be crazy. So. Look, I'm sorry if anyone was truly offended, but I also think that if if we offend you, then don't watch any other podcasts because this is probably one of the uh tamer i don't know yeah. i don't even they've talked about church half the time give it up yeah <laughs> don't <laughs> don't listen to the episode about my past halloween costumes i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah this is you know by the way speaking of podcast listeners i was i don't remember what city i was in i want to say it was 
Finland, I think it was Helsinki, or it was somewhere near the beginning of the tour. And when I'm done with my set, I'll I promote the I don't know about that podcast first. I'm with Jim, and I'm like, hey, if you're not listening already, I do like Jim. And then I say, I've got another podcast, the Merman podcast. And then I've been doing a joke the whole tour. I, like, I also have a GoFundMe uh, to raise money for prostitutes on the tour. So if you want to give, and like, that gets a laugh. By the way, one guy wrote to me and said, the link isn't working for the GoFundMe. And I like, ha ha. <laughs> and, and then he goes, no, seriously. And I go, oh, you're, <laughs> you think this really is like, <laughs> GoFundMe? I don't think you can do that that's on a, GoFundMe. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a good but, fan. But one of the, like, I want to say I was all thinking about it, but write in and let me know. A guy yells out as I was about to close it. He goes, Merman Podcast. Like, he yells at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yes, thank you, the Merman. I forgot. Oh, Dave's going to be a... Anyway, whoever that was, thank you for yelling that out and uh, promoting that from the, the, the balcony or wherever you were. You're far away. Well, uh, I think it was, was it, was it Richard? Might have been Richard. Some uh, somebody sent me. Someone sent me photos. They printed out our logo, mm-hmm. and then had it on like a sign. And I think I I don't think it was your show. I think it was Bert's show in in Australia. I think he was yeah. walking around and ha- having all the employees hold it and taking a picture of everyone yeah. around the venue holding that sign. You sent it. Somebody sent it to me too. And yeah, it was that Bert show in Australia. Yeah. And well, like, that was you, Richard. Thanks. If it was someone else. Still, thanks. That was pretty cool. To... I think it was Richard. I don't know. I think it was Richard. I don't know. Everything's a blur right now in my brain. So I don't know. But uh, um, but thanks to everybody that. But thanks to the guy that did that. Another guy gave me some drugs. They listened to the podcast. So that was cool. <laughs> I haven't taken them yet. Still in my suitcase. Pretty pretty cool thing to do. Right. Catch me now. Catch your limitation. You. Um. Anyways, well, uh, dyslexic Anna, what was her name? Some, uh, dyslexic Anna them. Boko. Yeah. We appreciate your comments. Yeah, we respect your, your thoughts on things, uh, but, you know, I, yeah. I I don't really know if I learned anything. <laughs> I, I already knew it was wrong before I did it, is my point. I, <laughs> that was the joke, <laughs> is that I was being an idiot. <laughs> Stop I wasn't doing that saying. Stop I wasn't doing that saying. Hey, everyone should do this. Like you know, like the joke Stop. is that I was being an idiot. What's funny, funny was stuff. seeing you guys like that. I think you guys are good, you know. But I was in a Trader Joe's the other day, and I heard just the widest voice going like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting some stuff for Cinco de Drinko." And I was like, "Oh <laughs> fuck you!" Like that. That one actually upset me. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. see this guy's face, but like I didn't need to. I'd like just that. I'm like, "Fuck you, man." <laughs> Sick of the drink but, then I'm, that. but then I'm watching then I'm watching Dave Torpedo calling the Sarape a, a Mexican a, what paper towel. <laughs> I'm wearing a paper towel and I was like, Yeah, he's good. He's good. Find yeah. my book. I wait, I said that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe I did do some offensive stuff. I should go back and rewatch the episode. <laughs> well, I'd say um uh if those guys said Cinco to Drinko and they're like, Yeah, I got the idea from the Merman podcast, then you know what? We've Really yeah, then we owe, then we should issue an apology. And that's, <laughs> but also Cinco to Drinko is pretty good. You can use that for any day. Like it's like happy hour. You know what time it is? Cinco to Drinko. It's about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that. Oh, I'm definitely using that. Thanks, Luis. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, white guy. <laughs> once, a, once again, it is the Mexicans' fault <laughs> for further. Yeah, see. <laughs> yeah. And you're appropriating uh, our culture now that you say Cinco to Drinko because that's us. Uh, Right. Yeah, that's well. I've thought about this, man. Everyone appropriates uh, dad culture all the time, right? Like uh, trucker hats started getting popular, mustaches are popular now. The fucking Hawaiian shirt, like basically, it's. But people aren't like dads are at the grill, but like that's like a thing dad, now. But you, you yeah. think dad should be a friend? Get out of here with this. This you should edit this <laughs> out. This is the worst analogy I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> people are appropriating dad. Like, what? Well, I just everyone everyone appropriates everything, and like, what what's the line that like what makes it uh, offensive? It's just if it's a race, if it's um, yeah, if it's yeah. you were that, doing good. That's what, right. You should we should have just moved to the next subject, and then you're like, I'll tell you another thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, hey, I'm not. I never said I was smart. All right. I mean, this is where we learn. We talk things out. We we experiment. We. It's why everyone needs to have a good friend in their life. 
Forrest, do you remember when we first started comedy and there was the people who would like post on Facebook who were like younger comics than us and they'd be like, standing ovation at the Miami Improv and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you didn't, you know? And it's like, that's why you always need a good friend. I would have never posted that because I would have known if I posted that, you or one of our other friends would have been like, what are you doing? Stop it. You're embarrassing yourself. Even if you, you know? got a standing ovation at the Improv, like, you wouldn't be allowed to post that. We wouldn't let you. Yeah, you, yeah you'd be like, what are you, a loser? Like... So everyone needs a good friend in their life to just be like, no, why? You know, and that's what, but that's what, that's, that's, that's what, that's what this kind of, it's us talking things out. I'm not saying I have the right idea on everything. I just was like, Hey, dad appropriation. And then you went, Hey, nah, nah, don't go down that road. That's a dumb idea. Right. That and it's like, you need people like that in your life. The people that huh? did, a lot of those people that did write stuff like that and like stock marrying, they're, they're probably famous now because they, they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel like i feel like i've i feel like uh i'm n n the le <laughs> i'm not outwardly a humble person but i feel like i've been too humble in my career on places i should have been braggadocious yeah because it seems like those people have gotten <laughs> a lot of attention does that make sense yeah 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 i mean it's it, yeah, exactly and it's like sometimes i look at it. i do the same thing where i'm like ah i should have I should have taken my dick out more and swung it around. Like, you know, uh, uh, um, not literally, figuratively. But, yeah. <laughs> but that's sometimes you get insulted. There was, there was a show here on the store, too. I, again, we've been to so many fucking places. I can't remember where this was. But I want to say it was like the Czech Republic or someplace like that. So people were like, woo, we didn't very much enjoy you. And then they, uh, they, to me, animals, they go, you guys, you should keep doing this. Like they thought this was like we just started or something. You're doing good, <laughs> yeah. very good. You keep doing this, and we're like, what do you think? We're just they just picked us up in the fucking town square. Like we're on the tour. Like, we're, <laughs> it's like keep it up. Yeah, it's good. I'm not bad. You give it a shot. Like okay. Thank so you. wait, uh, what day do you get back for us? Um, either the twenty second or the twenty fourth. Like that. When yeah. does when does Little Mermaid come out? Um, I think right around there, actually. Yeah. Let's say. <clears throat> Should we rent out a theater and see if people will come see the Little Mermaid with us? Sure. Yeah, we can do that. I don't May, know. If, May twenty six. Yeah. May twenty six. How many of our fans are in, in LA? But I'm down to do that. I'm, I'll be well, back. We could just invite our friends and stuff too. Like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's just, I don't care. If it's just the three of us, it'd be funny. <laughs> I, I, by the way, I I, I, uh, I tagged you in that. That's the there was mermaids everywhere in Warsaw, Poland, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Remember, I sent you that. I, I tagged you in the in a story. It was like three weeks ago, so you don't remember, but you reposted it. So. Oh, I did. I don't yeah. remember that. And their symbol for I guess it's not Poland, but Warsaw is like a mermaid. That's like that's oh the, yes, which is weird. Someone's... It's near water. It's just Poland. It's like what's going on? Someone uh, photoshopped my face on top of that and, and, and sent it back to me. Yeah. I do remember that now. I don't know why. I didn't get the whole story. We were only in Poland for like 19 hours. We had pierogies and mm. sausages and we left. You know, But I actually was surprised how much Poland was cool. I thought it was going to be kind of glum and whatever, but it was. I wanted to stay there longer. It was pretty cool. But anyways, I don't know. So I don't know what the – I should probably look that up for the podcast, like what the fuck this thing is. Hey, speaking of that. Our uh, comedy record. They, uh, yeah. They, uh, God bless them. Comedy records. What's that? So God bless them. Comedy records. That's where you could watch these on YouTube is the comedy records YouTube channel. Uh, see the without, full episodes. They yeah, support without us. That right now, this podcast wouldn't exist. But, um, yeah. So our friends. While you're there, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTubes. Mine is, uh, I'm, I'm migrating all my stuff over to my Meet Dave channel, both yeah. comedy and barbecue stuff. I have nothing on my YouTube, but uh, go ahead and subscribe to it because supposedly I'm supposed to about, about to get a bunch of help with my social media and all this stuff. But we'll see. Content. Hey, good I've been you. doing a lot of content in this tour. I don't know what to tell you, but trying my best. <laughs> but my Third quarter. Anyways, um, they in our little uh, chat thread with Barry and Tim, comedy records. Yeah. Uh, they sent us this article about. I think it was a dolphin and some sort of a killer whale a couple weeks ago. And now it's a dolphin and another animal died at a place called Niagara Falls Marine Center or some shit, which is already bad. Like, 
and all these marine mammals are dying there. What the fuck are they? Ju- are they jumping off the waterfall? <laughs> yeah, going down in a barrel. They, yeah. They're going over the edge. <laughs> Why are they there? Like they're look. Here's my thing. I'm sorry if you can't afford to go where dolphins and orcas and stuff. You don't get to see them. You got you got Netflix. You got TV. We're not bringing them to Toronto. Shouldn't be any of those fucking animals living in Toronto. Or by Niagara so, Falls. So it's it's like it's like in an aquarium or whatever. I don't know. It's called Niagara Falls. You have the text. I don't have my phone. Like I that. didn't read it. Um, I'll look and see if I can see it. But Niagara Falls. Uh, send it to Louise. I don't know if I close this screen yard. Is it dead? My dad. Takate is in good condition, motivating experts to bring her home. A healthy and wellness assessment found the 57 year old whale to be in good condition despite a prior illness. No. It's dead. This one about the killer whale looks like it actually is in it's in it's a Miami Sea Aquarium in Miami. No, I look. I don't have any pants on. All right, I just have underwear on. So if I Hello. get up to go get my phone, you're gonna see my underwear. All right, this one this one is about the beluga whale and bottlenose dolphin. Yeah, there you go. That one. Die in Marineland, Ontario. Government says. Marineland. Deaths deaths come two months after Kiska. Last captive killer whale in Canada died in Niagara Falls Park. A beluga right. whale and a bottlenose dolphin have died at Marine Land in Niagara Falls, according to the Ministry of some job title I've never heard of before. Marine Land hasn't responded to questions from CBC, but Ministry spokesperson Brent Ross advised them that necropsies, necropsies, <laughs> they're going to be reading. Up. They're going to Necrop- make up sushi. It's a necropsy. Yep. Necropsy is what an autopsy is for animals. It's the same thing. Got you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. that, that marks three reported deaths of marine animals at the theme park in two months. Okay. Uh, in, an unre- on an, on, in an unrelated story, the uh, Marine Lands restaurant has up, <laughs> upgraded their seafood menu. <laughs> Stop reading. You can't even say unrelated. You can, you're not fit to read this article. All right. I didn't know you couldn't read, too. I learned a lot of stuff no. about you. Yeah. I burnt my tongue, Forrest. What do you want from me? <laughs> okay, but do you think that any of these animals should be there in Canada? Okay. No, I First, mean, no, but I mean, a, li- a lion shouldn't be in Cincinnati, but it is in the zoo. Yeah, I don't think they should be there either. But the, but first of all, the place is called Marine Land, so you know it's going to be bad because... <laughs> It, it's marine land that doesn't even make sense. Like, it's, yeah. it should be marine tank, or marine aquarium, or something. That marine Maybe that's land. a problem. They just have all these things up on land. They just, yeah. they just hose yeah, them off. Put, that's why they're dying. They're like, we put the dolphin on the land, and it's like, I can't even live the Canadian. We put these little <laughs> fake, these little fake legs on them. Yeah. Hey, it's marine animals dolphin. on land. Hey. That's our thing. Like, you know, how's the Canadian accent? Oh, hey, yeah, we put the dolphin on the land, and it didn't. It just died. Hey, you know, I don't know what to do, man. Hey, the hoser. I can't do a Canadian accent. But Too much anyway. appropriation. What uh what do you so my skates on? Have we talked about the Miami Sea Aquarium on this podcast? I'm sure we have. I don't know. Uh what, what about I think it? you said you I think you said yeah. you worked there. I, it's just crazy that like I remember Miami Sea Aquarium was like the greatest when I was a kid. Like we I was like, this makes my year if we get to go there. And then you get to be older, and I think that's a good example of something that over time people have evolved and gone like, ah, this is kind of gross. We're putting a killer whale in a little tiny thing, and 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 it just got to swim in circles over and over again. And yeah, well, first now of the, all, now the the dolphins I bet have a okay life in there. The dolphins are probably all right. No, no, no. I mean, they um, get fed fish and they do little tricks. People love them. It you can buy a little wax kind of statue of them. Dolphins echolocate. You know, they send out a signal to the top of their, what it looks like their head, their melon, and they receive it back in their jaw. And then they, you know, they're able to like kind of create pictures of that. So they use their echolocation a lot. That's the sounds you always hear, the clicking. Yeah. If you're doing that on a, in, a, in a concrete tank, it's like, it would be like, you hearing like white static noise or just something like really irritating. So they, they shut down that part of their brain and activity, which is not healthy for them. 
I don't know if Dolphins get depressed or not. I don't know if that can be proven or not. They're very intelligent, but it probably leads to what would be mental health problems in Dolphins, and they've shown that that same thing with orcas and things like that. So there are facilities that are have better structures, but the Miami Seagram was built in, I don't know, 50s or 40s. It's old. And when you go there, it was like all concrete, the same way you just build a house like with cinder blocks and shit. When we were kids, I think it looked cool. We were just like, you're a kid. You're like, this is, they, they must be happy here, you know, whatever. And then, yeah, I'm happy. dude. They must be happy. But then when you go there, if you went there, it's shut down now, isn't it? Right. I mean, it, if it's not shut down, it's got to be really sad. Yeah. It's got to yeah. be like, there's just like one sea lion left and uh, sure. like, you know, a couple manatees in the manatee tank, and that's like it. Yeah, but it's like, they, you know, they did some work with manatee, manatee rescue, things like that. Manatees can survive in a tank better if, if they're rehabbing or injured or whatever. That's not as big of a problem, like, as far as, you know, their mental health or their health in general. But, man, it was like, I remember going there when I was older for some things. I'm like, oh, this is like a not a great facility, you know. What do you think? Do you think a, I bet a sea lion, that's pretty cush life for a sea lion, dude. Like sea lion, instead of being out in the the wild where like a killer whale or a great white shark is just waiting to freaking throw you up in the air and, and munch down on you, you're just chilling, dude. And all you got to do is twice a day, you walk out there, everyone claps, you do the little trick, or, 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 and they throw it, throw some food at you, and you're like, free food, I didn't even have to hunt for this. And then you're just like, all right, I'm going to go take a nap. Wake me up at the 3 o'clock show. Not a bad life. I think a sea lion would be better adjusted to a facility like that. Yeah, sure. But but dolphins and orcas, the more intelligent they get, I think it's 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 worse off for them and stuff. But, you, you, you know, I think you'd still want to be free as a sea lion because – and look, I've worked at facilities like this, and the Miami Supreme did a lot of – they. Did, I know that they did stuff with marine mammal rescue programs and things like that, so they were – in business of like helping to save some of these animals and stuff. But if you're a sea lion, you're not thinking like a human. You're not like, man, I can live in here where I can't, I don't, I'm not going to get killed by a shark or something like that. Or, or I can live out there and take my chances. They don't, they're, they're not like weighing. They're like, you know, they're, they're, what's dangerous and not dangerous. They're like, this is what I'd like to be doing. I want to be free and swimming in some kelp beds and stuff versus not doing that. Probably would be my guess. Cause they're not like, they're not, this isn't a Pixar cartoon. We're like, man, let me tell you, I used to live in a kelp bed. You guys got a good in here, man. It's like, it's like some old wise sea lion telling the young says, you born in captivity. You better like it. That's yeah. a good Pixar. Right. This. <laughs> but then they, but then they let him out and he's 20 feet up in the air and the grasps of a, a great white shark that just torpedoed him from underneath and in midair, he's thinking, should have stayed in the aquarium. I'm dead. Yeah, but but many of them live. They don't all get killed by great white sharks. Uh, not. I mean, it seems like in Shark Week they all die. <laughs> but how do they reproduce? Yeah. What do you drink? I don't know. Water. I didn't get my coffee on time to get here. Um, Did we get those Yeti. All right. Yet? Could we rent out the sea aquarium? <laughs> Wait, did we get the Yeti mugs, I asked, that were being set They up? actually, as of the, um, this po- point that we're recording, they arrive tomorrow. Oh, oh. wow. What By do you the mean, way, yes, we... we have a lot of voicemails to get to. We're not going to do them today because the technology is not Yeah. Right. But, uh, like, everyone, I guess you're not listening to the podcast because it did say that I'm leaving and we're recording a bunch in advance. So we would make jokes like, wow. The the Heat won the NBA Finals, which, by the way, they're doing great. They're up three two on the Knicks. As of the point of the so <laughs> fun, dude! But um, I can't believe uh, they're, they're they're like playing so good, dude. They, I mean, I just I, I hope, watched I, it I, hope, I, hope I, I don't eat my words by the time this comes out. But I mean, I I mean, I they got a chance with anyone if they just keep playing the way they're playing. I I watched a game all dubbed in great. I called you one time. Because it was the game where Jimmy Butler was going off and they went to overtime. And I was like, I can't get her on to my phone here. And I FaceTime you and you're having people over at your house. And as soon as I FaceTime you, I the it was when they were playing the Bucks. The Bucks reeled off like seven straight points. So I just hung up and you're like, <laughs> then I called you back when we went. You're like, oh, we got disconnected. I was like, no, when I, you know, that's it. I called you and they scored seven points. So it must have been the, the FaceTime it's messed with the magnetic fields and Giannis was hitting shots or something. But anyways, um. I watched one in, and they had the TNT feed. It was in Athens and it was just like Greek guys announcing, but they weren't doing it like picture in picture. So you could see the Greek guys. 
they just would like pretend like they're announcing the game and they turn down the volume a little bit. But then you'd see like I was like it was Iron Eagle and I forget who else it was. But it was a black man that was the other announcer. And then there was a guy who was clearly Jim, a, it was Jim Jim Jackson, probably. Jim Jack, yeah. And he and they would let Jim Jackson talk, and then a Greek guy would just come in like <laughs> and you'd be like, What the fuck? <laughs> just let him why can't you just do the English and then do the like you don't you know, yeah. And then like Spo would come on there, Coach Spo, and they and they were doing the, the sideline thing, you know, in between quarters. They would just let it happen with no sound. You'd just be watching with no sound. And then a Greek guy would translate it like ten seconds later, like I uh, Euros and the uh, Spanakopita and Bakalama. <laughs> he says he's very happy. <laughs> he says he very much likes Euros. Euros. <laughs> um anyways, it's it's Fun to watch. Now I'm in countries where they like basketball. Though. When I was in like the Germanic, not Germanic, but like Scandinavian countries, you couldn't watch it at all. But obviously Greece is mad for basketball. Portugal, I'm in Spain. Next couple of days, they love basketball. They're good, very good international teams. So I'm hoping to see the games. Fourth quarter. Forrest, do you miss your dog? I do. He was in Phoenix until like a day ago. He was in like living with a pack of dogs there with my buddy Lynn. And, um, he was really getting along good with some dogs and running around and like barking and doing shit he didn't normally do. And then he he's he's with Orlando and Vanessa now in LA and he I, I arranged a groomer for him like the day he got back because I'm sh- he was just living with a pack of dogs for three weeks. I don't think he came in fresh. He was just I've been got got to get them all gussed up for you for Pop Papa's home. Got to look your best. So now, what? Uh, I, everyone everyone play this game in your head as you're listening. What you think the answer is? How many times do you think Forrest has FaceTimed his dog while he's been gone? I'm going to go with five. Mm-hmm. Okay. Am I giving you the answer now? I'll give everyone one second to come up with the answer in their head. Forrest has been gone for about a month. How many times have you talked to your dog on FaceTime? Zero. You're a liar. I've got a, a lot of videos of him. Like, uh, like Lynn sent me tons of videos of him interacting with dogs and this and that, whatever. And, you know, that was it. But I didn't talk to him one-on-one and I didn't FaceTime with him. And then I called Vanessa and Orlando today just to see how things were going because they just got him. And I was on the phone talking to him and they said that he could hear my voice and he was wagging his tail. And I'm sure in his brain, he's like, I'm, I'm back in my aunt and my uncle's house. This is like one of my vacation homes. So I know I'm going home soon. So he's bringing up the vacation. <laughs> That that's what Orlando calls it. That's his his uh, Glendale van- vacation home. All so. right. Well, I owe you an apology, man. I I'm, I'm gone for like a weekend, and I Facetime, and I'm like, "Where's Gypsy? Hey, no, Gypsy! What? Hey, Gypsy!" And she's looking around for me, and I'm like, yeah. no, right here at the screen." That's why I don't do it because I feel bad for him. You're you're confusing him. Nah. Nah. Okay. This is the same logic you're using for the sea line. Right now, you're like, nah, nah they're <laughs> fine. Gypsy rather be in the water getting thrown around by a great white shark or FaceTiming with me. You'd be the judge. <laughs> uh, I just, I think, I, I don't think you're giving uh, animals enough credit for us. I think that they have feelings and can no, think deeper than you think. I know they have feelings. I just know they don't understand how phones work or screens on phones. I'm, I'm assured of that. That they're not like, oh, yeah, this is him. He's in Portugal. I'm FaceTiming with Forrest right now. Like he doesn't even know my name, first of all. So let's just start with that. Your dog I bet he does. Huh? You think your dog knows sure. your name? Yeah. How? Well, I think if if uh if Christy goes, Daddy's home, he's gonna go, huh? Ho for ho. She's gonna yeah, be man. like If she goes if she also goes, Daddy is home, he's Gypsy's not gonna react. It's all in the inflection. Because I'll tell you I what, think, I, went, I was at a I think, I think they, I think they pick up on words. I think if she go, if if uh, if she's laying on the couch and she just hears the word "daddy" or "Dave," I think Gypsy would be like, "Wait, what? That person's here?" Yeah, but the, I don't know. I don't think there's that. They know that's your name. I think that they know, like, oh, you're just setting away that I should perk up. Even I, I think I, I think she takes inventory of who's at the house too, because like if uh, yeah. if if I'm if 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 my gate like squeaks at all and she knows we're all home she goes crazy well if i'm gone yeah how many different names do you have for gypsy besides gypsy uh a lot yeah uh, gypsy responds to all those names probably gyps yeah uh gypsy girl gyps 
Gypsy, uh, chip, 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 chip. Oh, like that one. Uh, princess. Uh, yeah. Sweet and- gypsy. <laughs> Sweet Jiminy Dimity. Uh, how about uh, turkey giblets? <laughs> oh boy! Now um, I'm gonna get a now I'm gonna get a message that telling me that naming my dog Gypsy is insensitive and ugh. Gypsy tears. Um, the uh, and my point is is Gypsy knows all those names. I have all these different names for Arnie, you know, and same shit. And he responds. So I don't think they they really know their names, and they definitely don't know your names, and. I've, I've, I've been walking around a lot of these cities. I was at, near a dog park in Athens. And I was near a dog park in, like, um, I think it was uh, Copenhagen, right? And I, I like looking at the dogs because people are doing their, like, you know, speaking fucking uh, Danish, whatever that ridiculous language is. Bergen, Bergen, 18 consonants in a row. But uh, they, right. that, that actually truly was offensive, right? He, uh, was like, yeah, whatever. They're white. It was kidding. specifically... Talking negative about somebody's native tongue. Yeah, they're white. So what? We we can we can dress up like Danish people all we want, right? <laughs> they were one step away from the Germans in World War Two. Anyway, the uh, the um, thank you for all of my fans in Copenhagen that came out to see me, and uh, thanks for following me. But uh, the 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 dogs, they still were interacting with each other the same exact way. If I if you didn't hear any sound, it would look like a dog park in America. That's because they know how to talk to each other, and they just put up with whatever gibberish we're talking in whatever country we live in. They're, they're like, yeah, whatever this fucking guy's saying. It's body language and inflection. I'm not a dog whisperer, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. All right. We'll roll with it. All right. How are we doing, Luis? We we uh, we about out of time? Uh, I mean, we got a little more if you guys want what, to sign up. Was there a like topic it. that we uh, are forgetting about? Um. I don't, I don't think so. Um, we were the voicemail things. We told them we'll do those. Like, hold on, we're sorry that we didn't. Oh yeah, we didn't really finish that thought, but we will do the voicemails next episode. I'll be back. Um, yeah. So people that 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 we didn't that responded to them, like keep calling in, doing your thing. We'll respond to them. I have a feeling it's four people. Some one of I forget which which who wrote into me, and so they get more time. Because yeah. they, next weekend, next next episode is going to be a doozy. We're going to be sitting on the same side of the desk. We're going to be happy to see each other. We're going to have a lot to catch up on uh, when we're actually face to face. It's not so easy uh, on the Zoom calls and stuff. Uh, you know, next episode is going to be a banger. Just just putting that out there. Yeah, we're uh, and we're getting closer to the shows in Miami. We got to get the tails ready. A lot of things. Um, all right. Well, you know what? I gotta get one of these egg tarts now. You have to do what? Get an egg tart. An egg tart? That's yeah, like a food a, thing there. The famous thing in Portugal. You ever had those egg like custardy things at Chinese like uh, like in Chinatown or something like that? Or they don't usually have them at the Chinese restaurants because they're, they're they gotta make them. It's like almost like a flan custard kind of thing, but they call it an egg. Well, in Portugal, they have one egg tart, and it has actually like cinnamon and vanilla, and you're supposed to eat one when you're here. It's like a famous thing. Is it a dinner Why time you- there? You have you have egg you have uh, eggs for dinner. It's it's what time? It's eight o'clock at night here. Um, but that we, I just I came from this seafood restaurant that I told you about maybe two hours ago, and I don't think. I'm oh yeah, the barnacles in the in the Philly cheesesteak for dessert. Lobster. They had like a version. It was like a cross between a spiny lobster and a main lobster. It looked like a spiny lobster and it had little tiny claws. And then uh, we had there was something that looked like a stone crab, but it wasn't. It was like everything almost looked like the stuff in Florida. Um, but I, that was such a late lunch dinner, or whatever. I don't think I'm gonna eat dinner. I think I'm just gonna go to an egg tart and call it a night. Hey, you know, you know who's got a rough life? Those lobsters that are in the aquarium at the seafood restaurant and their claws are all taped together. They're just crawling all over each other. And then they finally, they finally are like, I'm being freed. See you later, suckers. And then they go into a pot of boiling water and they don't even kill them first. They put them straight into the boiling water, dude. That, now that, if people want to spend their time, I mean, I know that the aquariums and the the, the killer whales and stuff are, are worthy, but... You should speak up for the lobsters if you really care. 
Well, I, what I'd say to that is, at least someone puts them out of their misery. These, these freaking dolphins in the aquarium, like, kids like, all right, and then they put a dollar in the machine that made that plastic thing. Do they even have those anymore? Like, yeah. Yeah, those are the best. No, they're wax. They they press them into wax, and then it's like, dude, I, we they were so expensive, and they probably they're like five five cents to make. Um, okay. So what you're so what you're saying is, if we we use the dolphins and the whales in captivity as entertainment for a certain period of time, but as long as we eat them at the yeah. end, kill then them. it was justified. Yeah, you gotta kill them and eat them. So all right, there you go. We solved the problem. We just want to be, you just want to do the humane thing. Yeah. Well, I think we learned a lot today. Mm -hmm. We solved a lot of problems. We certainly didn't create new ones. No, no. We'll certainly but, have only positive comments on this, on this, I mean, on this video. Only positive, if we have only positive comments, we're doing something wrong. I feel like. Louise, do we have a lot of negative comments? No, I mean, uh, just it, that was that one good. other one on the YouTube. But was there a second one that you didn't read? Yeah. Oh, what was the other one? Uh, this yeah. one, this person's actually, I mean, I don't know about Mexican, at least Latino. Okay. It comes from Julio Ruiz that says, "Take this down. So insulting to Mexicans dressing up as that. So pathetic." Uh, All right. All right. Well, <laughs> to, to, to Julio, I'm actually, I'm actually sorry. <laughs> Why aren't you sorry? To, I don't get it. Because because they said they're not Mexican. I don't know. I I think if they act, I don't I don't think those people actually watch the the episode. I think they just were scrolling. Yeah. Did they get a lot of hits? <laughs> That's what matters. <laughs> yeah. Were the views worth this? That's <laughs> now there goes my there goes um, my, my views <laughs> actually went up. Uh, in the past few weeks, and it's been yeah. consistent. Hey, we just got to get forced out of here. All of a sudden, we're killing it. Don't worry, I got, I got some, um, I got some costumes from, uh, from Spain. I'm bringing back so noise, like bullfighter. All guy. right, we'll go get your egg tart, bro. I'll send you a picture. I'm gonna take a nap over there first. I'm jealous. I'm gonna go swim laps. Get my dad bod in shape so people can appropriate my dad culture. Uh, go to DaveWilliamsonComedy.com. Check out my tour dates. I'm going to be in Boise. I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm going to be in Grand Rapids. I'm going to be in Florida with Forrest. Uh, I'm going to be in Chicago this summer, guys. The Schomburg Improv. Uh, DaveWilliamsonComedy.com. Follow me on all the socials at DaveWComedy. I got brand new uh, redesigned labels on my rubs and my all-purpose seasoning that I sell on my website. And uh, go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Not the old one, but the new one that is under Meet Dave. Yeah, cool. Real cool, dude. Um, I'm going to be places, too. Think you're cool? I'm going to be in Vegas twice. Ooh. Next, I'm going to be... I'm going to open up for Jim in June. Then I'm going to be at the Comedy Cellar in August. So if you live in Vegas, you have many opportunities to see me. And I'm going to be in Montreal. Montreal, Canada. I'm going to set some whales free there. I'm going to be at the Comedy Nest. And then I'm at the Philly Punchline for one night only on Sunday, July 9th. So check that out. And then I'm in Miami. Oh, I'm in like a festival in Montana. Big Sky. Come check that out. Oh, you're going to do Big Sky? No, no, it's just like a music festival that I'm doing comedy at called Wildland. Oh. Wildlands Festival. That's cool, I guess. Foo Fighters are going to be there, Lord Huron, and Forrest Shaw. <laughs> no, Orlando will be there, too. Um, anyways, ForrestShaw.net, it's all on there. Suckers. All right, Louise, he's on his phone, just scrolling. It's like I'm there. <laughs> Dave's telling jokes and I look over and I'm like oh, yeah except for now that I got a screen to look at I can see him back there too busted but, uh, yeah with all your all right. gaming hair and your other shit back there real cool Stop you being know what the so best nice, part is the Cinco de Mayo thing that people that two people disliked everyone else didn't like it uh, the best part was that I didn't notice until I saw the clip was when you started doing the, the tornado thing <laughs> oh this thing it made me laugh what? When I was doing this, yeah, you're going clip. Great. Yeah, it was Not Cinco de Drinco. 
Then go to drink. Go. All right. We'll take us out. All right. I miss you, buddy. Be safe. Come back to us uh, in uh, one piece and ready to uh, sit on the same side of the desk. Put on, push him an aloe vera on your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, you know where I'm going? That I can get some cultural appropriation? Tel Aviv. I just thought of that. I'll get you some stuff there we can wear. <laughs> I don't even know where that is. Sounds great. For they are the mermaid.